Cloaked in moonlight and guided by unwavering faith, the Knights of Radiance are the champions of Selune, goddess of the moon and stars. They are elite warriors who protect Selune's faithful from encroaching darkness and foster hope in the hearts of the weary. They are beacons of defiance against the shadows. Hello guys, Genuine here of Genuine Gaming, and here is my Knight of Radiance build for Baldur's Gate 3. This is not an overpowered build but a thematic one. You can play this build on Honor Mode. You can use this build on Shadow Heart, as this build is also a lore-friendly build for Shadow Heart when she decides to spare Dame Aelin. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to like, and for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos, subscribe to the channel. Overview The Knight of Radiance is basically a paladin slash cleric build that optimizes its spells that deals radiant damage to enemies through items and equipment. There are items in the game that give a Radiant Orb condition to enemies. For those who do not know yet, Radiant Orb gives a negative 1 penalty to attack rolls per remaining turn on the affected enemy. At the same time, it also sheds a bright light on the area surrounding it. If it is already applied, it adds to the duration of up to 10 turns. This would also mean the enemies with Radiant Orb condition will also have a penalty to their attack rolls up to negative 10. This is a huge debuff to enemies, giving them a hard time to hit you and your party members. Aside from giving a huge debuff to enemies, the Knight of Radiance could also deal a good amount of damage through her smite abilities as a paladin, as a cleric, a good healer for the party. Gear and Equipment The following items are important for the Knight of Radiance to deal a Radiant Orb condition to enemies. Luminous Armor When the wearer deals radiant damage, they cause a radiant shockwave that inflicts radiant orb in a 3 meter radius for 2 turns. Luminous Gloves When the wearer deals radiant damage, the target receives 1 turn of radiant orb. And Coruscating Ring When the wearer deals spell damage while illuminated by a light source, they also inflict a radiant orb upon the target for turns. Instead of equipping her with a Sacred Star, which also inflicts the Radiant Orb condition, I let my Knight of Radiance wield Belm. Belm has this ability called Perfectly Balanced Strike, which the wielder will be able to attack using her bonus action. This would allow my Radiant Knight to cast a spell on her regular action and still make an attack on her bonus action. You can get this weapon in an opulent chest in Jehera's basement under Alirathin's home in the Lower City. Another important piece of equipment for this build is a Steel Watcher Helmet, which gives the wearer dark vision up to 12 meters and is immune to blindness. The most important thing that this helmet gives to our Knight Radiance is the advantage on constitution saving throws. As much as possible, the Knight of Radiance holds in concentration the Spirit Guardian spell for an optimized Radiant damage. It would be difficult to break this spell if the Knight of Radiance has an advantage on concentration saving throws, which the Steel Watcher helmet gives. You can find this helmet on a table in the Steel Watch Foundry. Another important piece of equipment so as not to break your constitution is the Boots of Striding. When you cast a spell that requires concentration, you cannot be pushed or get knocked prone. Whenever the caster is knocked prone, he automatically breaks concentration without making a saving throw. These boots will prevent that from happening. Build If ever you decide to make a custom character for this build, you can choose any race for this build. In case you use this build on Shadow Heart, I suggest starting her with a cleric class so as not to mess up some dialogue options. But if you play with a custom character, I suggest going first for the paladin class so as not to be late with the extra attack at level 5. For the background, you can go for the soldier or acolyte. For the abilities, make her Wisdom 16, Dexterity 16, Constitution 15, and Charisma 10. For your skills, you can choose whatever your party needs. As a level 1 Paladin, the Knight of Radiance gets 3 charges of Lay on Hands which recharges after a long rest. She also gets 1 charge of Channel Oath which recharges after a short rest. Her Channel Oath will depend on the subclass she chooses. 
You can choose any of the subclass, it doesn't really matter. But I like the Oath of the Ancients for healing Radiance ability. At level 2, she gains the Divine Smite ability. When she hits a melee weapon attack, she may choose to expand a spell slot to inflict additional Radiant damage. The higher the spell slot expanded, the higher the damage. Also at level 2, she gets a fighting style. For her fighting style, I suggest picking defense. As in the early levels before getting the weapon belm, the Knight of Radiance would be dual wielding a weapon so that she could use her bonus action for her attack and her regular action is used to cast a spell. She also gains two level 1 spell slots. At level 3, she gains Divine Health. The Knight of Radiance would not get affected by disease. She gets Nurture Wrath and Turn the Faithless for her Channel Oath. She also gets Speak with Animals and Ensnaring Strike for her additional Oath spells. She gets 3 level 1 spell slots. At level 4, she gets to choose a feat. For her feat, choose Resilient and make her Constitution 16. This would make the Knight of Radiance proficient with Constitution Saving Throw. She can now add her Proficiency Bonus to her Constitution Saving Throw, which is very useful in not breaking her Concentration spells. At level 5, she now has an extra attack. She gains Misty Step and Moonbeam for her Oath spells. She now has 4 level 1 spell slots and 2 level 2 spell slots. At character level 6, she now jumps to the Cleric class. As a level 1 Cleric, she is going to choose the Light Domain and Salune as her deity. As a Light Domain Cleric, she gets Warding Flare as a feature. For her domain spells, she gets Light, Burning Hands, and Fairy Fire. For her cantrips, choose Guidance, Produce Flame, and Thaumaturgy. At character level 7, she gets Turn Undead as a Channel Divinity action. She also gets Radiance of the Dawn as her Light Domain feature. Radiance of the Dawn dispels many magical darkness in the area and deals 2d10 plus character level radiant damage to hostile creatures. She now has 3 level 2 spell slots. At character level 8, she now learns second level cleric spells. She also gets a flaming sphere and scorching ray for her domain spells. She now gains 2 level 3 spell slots. At character level 9, she gets a feat as a level 4 cleric. For her feat, she increases her wisdom to 18. She also gets another cantrip. She can choose Sacred Flame for her cantrip. She now gains 1 level 4 spell slot. At character level 10, she gets Destroy Undead as a level 5 cleric. She can now prepare level 3 cleric spells. She will be using the Spirit Guardians as her main damage feature. Spirit Guardian is a very powerful spell especially if the Knight of Regions will be able to maintain it. That is why we equip her with a Steel Watcher Helmet and gave her the Resilient Feat to not easily break her concentration. Aside from dealing damage to enemies, she can also debuff her with the Radiant Orb decreasing her attack rolls up to 10. She gets Daylight and Fireball for her domain spells. She now has 2 level 4 spell slots. At character level 11, she now has 2 charges of Channel Divinity. She also gets Improved Warding Flare for her Light Domain feature. Improved Warding Flare allows the Knight of Radiance to use her reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll when they attack one of her allies. She now has 3 level 4 spell slots and 1 level 5 spell slot. At character level 12, she can now prepare level 4 cleric spells. She also gains Guardian of Faith and Wall of Fire as an additional spell as a light domain cleric. She now has two level 5 spell slots. Gameplay As I mentioned before, I would suggest to do a wield Knight of Radiance with finesse weapons so that she could use her regular action to cast a spell and use her bonus action to attack. Her attack may not be that strong but she could always use her smite ability to boost her damage output. Once she finds Belm in the lower city of Baldur's Gate, I suggest equipping her with a Shield of Devotion to increase her AC and an additional level 1 spell slot. 
Always cast Spirit Guardians at the beginning of every combat to utilize this powerful spell. Always move her around if possible to optimize the Spirit Guardian's damage output. Aside from dealing damage to enemies, the Spirit Guardian also debuffs enemies by dealing Radiant Orb on them. So, that's about my Knight of Radiance build. And if you're looking for more Shadow Heart build ideas, here is my Justiciar of Saluna build video for you. See you there! Ciao!